Hello, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Milos Manic. I am professor of computer science with Virginia Commonwealth University and president of Industrial Electronics Society. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Don Tan as one of our town hall speakers. Today, today's topic will be about something that many of our members are interested in, IEEE fellow applications. Also, I would assume very informative for those involved in the process, searching um, and, and preparing um, applications as well as providing um, references and similar. Um, it would probably not do justice for me to introduce Dan, but uh, I will I will mention several of his positions. Uh, President of IEEE Transportation Electrification Council, Chair of IEEE Fellow Advisory Oversight Committee, Vice Chair of IEEE Industry Engagement Committee, candidate for IEEE TAVP elect 2025, Chair of uh, IEEE Fellow Committee 22-2023, Division uh, two director, IEEE board directors, 2017, 18, and many, many others, PELS president, etc. cetera. Um, Don, I didn't do justice with this, but I will let you introduce yourself more thoroughly and please um, present us with more and latest information about IEEE fellow applications. And thank you very much for doing this. Yes, you are on mute. Okay, here you go. Hey, thank you, Milash. And uh, for me, it's a good morning. For many of you, it's a good afternoon. Uh, good evening. Uh, let me share my PPT. So it's good, great uh, to have. Let me see how do I share this. Um, here you go. Now you should see it. All right. It's a, a great opportunity for me to uh, share uh, my uh, knowledge about. Uh, I will touch a little bit of senior members, and then uh, then uh, the focus will be on fellow elevation. Um, quickly, uh, let's let Miloshi introduce. The, I have done many many things uh, within IEV for a long time. A volunteer, like many of you, uh, and then worked for a, a U.S. Uh, uh, five. Uh, Fortune 500 company uh, at various uh, include uh, functional project management and technologists um, with uh, you know hundreds of millions of dollars of uh, portfolio. Um, okay, so so today I'm going to give you a quick uh, review. Uh, I probably will talk about 30 or 40 minutes, and then uh, we can open for uh, for Q and A. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, member grades, uh, how do you prepare yourself, judging yourself, presenting yourself. And then we can share some statistics about class of 2024. Uh, quickly touch the resources online. Uh, if you have time, we can talk a little bit about industry engagement or transparency and electricity council. But uh, we'll focus on the, uh, of, on the senior members and the fellow. So the first of all, the senior member grade, um, it's the uh, the highest grade that a member can apply to, and then it's a prerequisite to be a fellow. Uh, for senior member qualifications, 10 years of professional experience, including graduate uh, studies. And the amount of 10 years of that, you should have uh, five years of significant performances over the past 10 years. Uh, three references is required if you apply uh, by yourself. Uh, but if you are nominated by a senior member, then only two additional references are required for a total of three. Another significant uh, uh, aspect is that uh, there's no limit on how many applications can be approved every year, <clears throat> contrary to the uh, to the fellow elevation by the board of directors defined it uh, to be uh, less than 0 0.1 less or equal to 0.1% of a membership uh, of the previous year, uh, December of previous year. Uh, for senior members, the elevations are done on the rolling waves. 
uh, typically they scheduled on uh, four rolling waves. Sometimes they uh, we actually add one more step, uh, one more wave, just to uh, if there's uh, enough uh, uh, application. So there's a portal which where they, there's a lot of information included, uh, including how you <clears throat> calculate uh, the qualification of five years. Uh, uh, so if you go there, as I shown in here on this link, then you will see uh, a lot of information. So the benefits, uh, of course, then uh, I would get to highlight quite a few of them. Uh, uh, first one of the, of course, is the peer review uh, recognition. Uh, then you, as a senior member, you will get a senior member plaque. Uh, there's the actually society will get some benefits. Then we'll get a coupon, and then yeah, you then um, then you if you so des if so desired your you uh, actually you will send a, a letter to uh, empl your employer if so desired. Uh, so uh, most of us, that, that's basically what happens if you become a, a senior member, and then. Um, or uh, another benefit that are sometimes called intangible benefits is that, that uh, you you got the leadership eligibility uh, because many of the IHB uh, senior leadership uh, um, positions requires uh, you be a senior member or above. And then uh, so of course then you have ability to refer other candidates. Then you will be able to participate in senior member uh, review panel. Uh, then. Um, Your society and council uh, in their local chapter newsletters, they can announce them. So certainly it's, you know, free publicity for your career. Uh, so uh, you can start early, uh, of course. Uh, was it? Uh, as we mentioned before, that uh, many executive uh, volunteer positions are required to be a senior member. And that's uh, will be beneficial for you to be a senior member. So if you are a long time, if you are a volunteer for HUV, uh, as many of us are, then that will actually open doors for you. So that's a good some advantage. Of course, for HOP, that that has higher retention rates, um, and then that uh, can be nominated by a section by a section, and then okay, uh, you can write the uh, endorsement letters uh, from your section uh, to find uh, if you think uh, they can enhance your uh, case. So then uh, that's basically uh, a, a senior member. Senior member uh, is, uh, relatively speaking, pretty straightforward. The key uh, is there, there's no limit on how many applications can be elevated on each year. So then as long as you are qualified, then, um, then you, you know, they usually will elevate, elevate you. <laughs> so, so now <clears throat> let's move to the fellow. So, the fellows, there's a limitation on, you know, you can only have a, a, a less or equal to the maximum 0.1% of membership of previous December, uh, pre of the December of the previous year. So that's the uh, uh, maximum uh, set in by the board of directors in the, uh, uh, the bylaws. Of course, so this is the highest form of peer recognition by your technical skills, and then that's a, a highly prestigious. And then also high, highest the grade, uh, grades that the HB board of directors convert to a member. Uh, then uh, this requires you basically you have made a significant impact to the society at large. Uh, 10 or 15 years of uh, professional uh, uh, experience and uh, excluding graduate studies. So th this is different than uh, senior member. Senior member, your graduate studies can be count in, but uh, for fellows, they cannot be counted. Um, and then with the minimum requirements is uh, five years for accumulated IGB membership in any grade. So the key words, the two elements here, one is that the uh, accumulative, the other one is uh, in any grade. So, and then uh, can you can have up to five references and three endorsements. And that here it's uh, the no limit on how many times you can be nominated. So in other words, you um, you can you can uh, try uh, to work together with a nominator. You can try as many times as you want. But uh, uh, like I mentioned before, the elevations are done once a year. Uh, typically, uh, the announcement is made after the November order series, as we all know. 
uh, because the board approved during November series and then and then the staff will make the announcement. <clears throat> So the this is similarly to the senior member, there's a, a portal. Uh, there's a, a lot of information. So I will talk a little bit more about all these the, uh, aspects one by one. So first, let's talk about it. You know, uh, it's great. Uh, so it's not an award, even though many society lumped in the uh, award uh, uh, committee together with the awards committee. And also to many people that uh, uh, this is kind of a lifetime achievement recognition. So, but uh, when we uh, come to think about it or uh, think about your qualification, you need to be aware that, that this is simply is a, a grade. So I've been a grade that, that the fellow committee debated uh, many times that um, um, so we have decided not to put, put any limit on uh, how many times one person can be uh, nominated. Uh, the simply because it's a membership grade, you pay to belong. So then you should have to uh, have the rights to be considered for, for the grades you think you deserve to be. Uh, so that's why there's, a, there's an implication on being a, a member grade. So contrary to many uh, uh, awards, they have actually a uh, number of limits on how many times you can nom you can be nominated. <clears throat> so the, the qualification if it is defined in the actual bylaw, uh, it says um, is the, uh, bring, uh, the bringing the realization of a significant value to society uh, we are at large. So the reason we want to add the words at large is simply to mint it's not a particular technical society that we are so used to uh, because uh, you know uh, each one of us belongs to uh, one or two or even more uh, societies. So here is the, uh, is the society at large. So the key words here is a significant impact to society at large. So we'll I'll come back to this uh, later. <clears throat> so the uh, I mentioned this before that the, you know uh, contrary to senior members, your graduate study years does not count. So, but unlike the senior member uh, qualification requirement, there's no limit on number of years or experience, uh, professional experiences that you have to have uh, to qualify to be nominated. Uh, so, um, so it's in the uh, bylaw, but however, uh, so this is the one thing we are in the process uh, trying uh, to define. So we are consulting with the various different uh, tab societies, uh, different IGB OUs. So it um, so looks like we're gonna probably have a requirements of 10 or 15 years of uh, professional life just be be a consumer rate uh, uh, with the uh, HB of a senior member will be since this is the uh, the next grade higher. Um, <clears throat> so then um, then if you are expire you know, inspired to be a fellow, then you need to have a plan. Uh, so I'm talking to uh, since I talk to many the uh, YPs too. Uh, so you need to set so that this is a charge for them. Uh, set up the goal, start early, even if a YP at the moment. Pay attention to publications, uh, uh, including the right patent applications, uh, uh, the right internal IRAT uh, and external project reports. These the bottom two items is also referred to uh, as the uh, you know other peer reviewed items. So they can be uh, useful as long as they are peer reviewed. Then you need. A, I would encourage you to build a relationship uh, with volunteers because I should be such a big organization. Uh, that's uh, it will be good for you know for you to uh, to understand how I should be works and then have a uh, you know knowledge about I should be as an organization. I should be uh, getting to about uh, you know half a million members, the world's largest member. And then there's more than 1,000 uh, volunteers. This is a, is a fairly big organization. Uh, so the even more, I, I would suggest you should go uh, go find an IEEE mentor uh, if you can. Um, then uh, then you can find an IEEE sponsor that is even better. Uh, a sponsor takes uh, the steps one more steps further. They can be actually advocate on be on your behalf uh, to the opportunities to volunteers. Uh, and then they can critique your thoughts and a qualification. Um, so this is basically uh, uh, my attempt to answer the question. Some people uh, frequently asked by many people, 
which is that uh, I mean, how do I find a mentor? How do I actually find a nominator? Uh, find a reference writer or endorsement writer. So this, you know, find an IGB mentor or IGB sponsor can be uh, helpful. So one thing uh, I'd like to mention that is that, uh, as we all know, uh, you know, as a mentor and the sponsor relationship cannot be forced by you. Uh, and it needs to be uh, developed, uh, you know, naturally um, because the, the two person, uh, two people together, they need to be actually have a chemistry together so they can share their thoughts freely, you know. So they see uh, many of times uh, when I was uh, managing the department, so, uh, also in our in our public training society, uh, we actually developed a mentor program, so, so for the mentoring. But sometimes it just simply does not work <laughs> because if we, if we force them to two people two, uh, two people together, they may they may not click. Yeah. So 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 it needs to be developed naturally. So the best thing to do that is volunteer uh, to join one or uh, more societies or uh, to join your local chapters or sections to volunteer. That's the best way to get to know people within IEEE. So then uh, uh, people also frequently ask, how do I find uh, potential reference writers? Uh, of course, then uh, there are different ways. First one is search IEEE fellow directory online. So this is available to everybody. You can type in uh, uh, your region, or type in your technical field keywords, and then they will show you the, uh, the fellows in your region or your technical field and the citation of the elevation and also the year uh, elevated. Then you can you know how senior they are and uh, what technical field they are in. So that can help you to determine uh, who would be best for, uh, qualified to help you to, uh, to write reference letters. And then, uh, of course, the other way is to ask your chapter society or adjacent society for help. And uh, of course, if you're not a society member, you join the society. Oh. And then the, the third way is relatively new that the, uh, the board of directors actually recently, uh, two years ago, uh, approved the plan for each society and council to have a fellow nomination committee or a fellow search committee. So. The pure task for the committee is actually to uh, find potential candidates uh, who can be uh, considered for uh, uh, for nomination. So you encourage them to, to put the efforts in uh, to get the nominations done. Um, so this is the uh, for endorsement writers. They usually the, these are the people uh, who know you best. They basically have a first-hand knowledge of your work. Uh, so we'll uh, talk a little bit more about all these uh, the references writer and the endorsements writer and the roles they play uh, a little bit later. So then uh, once you uh, have this in plan, then the, the, the next big question is that uh, then, how do I judge myself? Do I have a chance? You know, how do I then, the first of all, there's no cut and dry rules as to effectively judging yourself um, from qualification. Um, but uh, like I mentioned a little while ago, that uh, typically um, you should have a few worthy achievements, uh, technical contributions in research as engineer, scientist, technical innovator, educator, technical leader, or standards contributor, or oh, and. So the recent words you see here used to be all, now it's and. So I will elaborate that uh, more, uh, that the difference, uh, single word difference, that's a single, that makes big difference. 10 or 15 years of professional uh, life experience, uh, then of course it's not a necessarily a life achievement award. Uh, too many is not, but too many they are. So then they say not necessary. So then uh, in order to help people, I develop my so-called dance 10% rule. <laughs> I know people want to think about, uh, you know, how do I, you know, quantitative to, uh, to judge this? How do I really have a concrete uh, thinking? So the the first the, the, the thing to do is ask yourself if you have one or two, even more, or three, or even three technical contributions uh, in your, part, your particular technical field that can be roughly ranked in the top 10%. So you can see you know, that there are a few elements in here. One is that uh, two or three contributions. And the second key is that in your particular technical field, for, for instance, the industry electronics, uh, there are many different fields, say, as if you're judging by the number of technical uh, committees. 
that we have, then you can see that there are many uh, fields there. And then the roughly ranked in top 10%. So that's uh, how you look at the for the contribution in the particular field, say modeling and control. Uh, you say, hey, maybe that I can think in the... Uh, then uh, by your uh, contribution by yourself and also judged by uh, your peers. So these are four elements uh, for this to work. So then you would ask me down, how do we come up with 10%? So this is the simple math. Uh, 0.1% a year that's set by the board of, uh, board of directors, so then uh, typically uh, a, a professional life 30 years or plus. Um, so let's just use 30 years for now. And then you, that's give you 30, uh, 3%. And then the mo in the most in the recent years, the elevation rate uh, is about three to one. Uh, so in other words, one, uh, 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 one out of every three nominations uh, is successful. So that's pretty, so about 33%. So that's give you uh, uh, 9%. And if you round them up to 10%, it's easy, and round number to use, easy to remember. So that's how the 10% looks. So here I want to emphasize that there are many people, you know, when they when it comes to thinking about uh, become a fellow, you thought, oh, I have to be 0.1%. That's good. Uh, yes. But that's actually, you know, for, for, that's the total uh, population uh, uh, for every year. But uh, for your particular contribution, it's actually a 10% chance. Uh, and then you can see that's actually a difference of 100 times. So you actually, so that's why I actually, um, I've been giving this uh, uh, seminar to many uh, places to encourage people to consider. Uh, so as long as you had, uh, your contribution can be considered as top 10%, then you have a, a fair chance. Uh, so it's not like 0.1%. 0.1% is the number, but at that particular year, the board of directors sets uh, the maximum, you know, people can be elevated. <clears throat> so <clears throat> then, uh, the, the, once you do this thing, you, uh, you thought that we went through your thought process, do you think you have a chance? Then that you, that you, that I would encourage you to uh, read the qualification profiles. So the currently there are four qualification profiles available online based on our the traditional uh, four categories of a qualification. Um, so they are you know in the in the in this document the IGB fellow committee uh, documented the guide how to write an effective uh, nomination. Uh, we are in the process you know updating this. Uh, but uh, uh, so uh, because there's a lot of things happening, so we have not got uh, things done just yet. But uh, eventually, this will be updated. But uh, there's a, a, as you know, that so this is one example uh, to tell you that the the files. This is actually the, pulled out of a uh, Steve uh, Wozniak uh, nomination. Uh, he was actually recently elevated to be an actual fellow. So as we all know, uh, he's one of the three people who actually uh, worked with Steve Jobs uh, to build the first Apple computer in uh, Steve Jobs' the garage. So we're not saying everybody has to be that kind of uh, qualification, but nevertheless, uh, to give you the example, uh, can, you can see the uh, top example you know, how the qualification can be done uh, and the words you can use. So that can be very really helpful to anybody who is thinking uh, in that category. <clears throat> So I have mentioned that before we have, traditionally we have a, a four uh, qualification categories, but recently that the, the four qualification uh, has been elevated in uh, uh, the qualification used to be a nomination qualification for each package. A nominee, you can only belong to one category, but uh, one of the significant change for the, the new process is that now, uh, a, a, a nominee can actually uh, nominate it for multiple categories. Now it's called a, uh, a nomination. Uh, it's a the, the terminology is being changed from a nomination category to contribution uh, category. So then uh, the, the significance here, as I mentioned before, used to be you have to be, be belong to one, one of the four. So the relationship is all. So you need to be a research scientist or a TI or an educator or a, a, a technical leader. All right. <clears throat> so now we change it to uh, a, um, uh, a contribution 
uh, category. So now you can belong for each uh, application. You can belong. You can pick up to two. So I will talk about a little bit more. Let me uh, so focus on this matrix. So that's one category. So um, I'll go to one more. Uh, step deeper is that uh, for each category, we actually expanded the contribution characterization matrix. Uh, in other words, this is a long official language we use, but it's basically criteria for uh, for the judges to use, uh, to think about it when it comes to judging. So basically in the past, that uh, uh, as for those of you who have been out of it already, uh, you can see that uh, we typically is written, the original is written for research scientists is highly focused on papers. So one of the things that I did uh, when I, together with our committee, we expand this to a from one by one matrix to now currently five by five matrix. Uh, as you can see now uh, on the, uh, uh, you can see we have research publication, peer reviewed publication, design products, processes, algorithms, systems, and uh, uh, public industry contributions, patents and trade secrets. And the standards you can see, uh, these are things that in the past um, it's not you know explicitly called out and then uh, it's not actually uh, uh, placed you know emphasized em not emphasized a bit. So, but uh, like remember, uh, if you uh, the the board of director has approved this matrix, and then going back to that I mentioned it a little while ago, uh, it's the impact to uh, society at large. You can see that the. A lot of technologies, you know, in order for them to be impact to society, they usually uh, appear as a products, uh, uh, designs, processes, algorithms, and systems, and uh, publication and uh, other publications. So one typical example is the iPhone in your hand, no, not iPhone, say smartphone, right? And then that's the design concept, and then that changed the way we live. So that's the impact to society. Uh, and then also, if you have a huge deployable system that has been operational, say in an aircraft, in a something operational, that's impact to society. So this, you know, etc. So then, uh, based on that, and then uh, each five of the categories, so then the board of directors added uh, one more category, as you can see, is the standards contribution. Uh, um, so now we have five categories. And each category had its own. For instance, the traditional category, research engineer and scientist, the number one criteria is the research publication is highlighted green here. Uh, then uh, as the original, uh, uh, state. the number two will be peer reviewed case, they highlight as yellow. And then uh, uh, patents and trade secrets, they are highlighted in yellow too. And then for uh, designs, the product, et cetera, and the standards for academia, uh, they are you know, uh, third criteria. They are least important, of course. Many of them didn't do this too, but uh, as far as uh, qualification is concerned, uh, that that's this important. For technical innovators, that's the traditional uh, called application engineers and then uh, practitioners. Uh, the reason we changed the TI uh, one is that, uh, that these terms, application engineer, practitioners are old. And uh, to many people, they actually, uh, it direct, it's actually directory. Um, the more important is that it does not reflect the reality uh, in the field, as we just I mentioned just a little while ago, the industry actually contributed quite a bit uh, uh, to the impact of society. Uh, so, so you know, if we for those of us, uh, we all are familiar with the uh, te uh, technology readiness level, and then we uh, um, you probably have heard the terminology called the death valley of the technology development. So, which means that a lot of technology they are successful in the lab cannot actually make to the final products for various different reasons. Uh, that's, you know, uh, that's where the uh, industry people, uh, technologists come in to, to help you to uh, make them uh, producible, uh, scalable. So that's where the uh, uh, contributions are and that's where the recreations are, you know, happened. So then it's, uh, you know, so somehow we just overlooked this important uh, aspects of the entire uh, life cycle of the technology development. So this basically uh, recognized that the reality in the change and also the impact to society at large and by the I2B. Technical leaders, then you can say it's similar to industry people. The primary contribution is design products, uh, processes, algorithms, systems, et cetera, uh, trade secrets. And then for educators, it's quite different than the, the 
Number one is that uh, uh, peer-reviewed materials, because they, they, they recognize for the good book textbook they do, or uh, for a lab course or a lab menu, they have already developed uh, for that contribution. And then the papers and the trade secrets uh, patterns, they are second tier. And then of course, similar to academia, the products, et cetera, and the standards, they are a third tier. And then the, the fifth new category that the board approved is standards contributors. And it's actually, of course, the standards actually is number one. The rest are to the left, are three of them. It's number two, the paper is the least important. So this probably give you the more uh, um, the, uh, ref uh, the reflection or a recognition of uh, reality uh, uh, you know, uh, you, in the changes, so to speak, as you know, for standards is important. If you work in the phone, uh, 5G and 6G, then, you know, huge, you know, work efforts going on uh, for the you know, standards. As we all know, that's critically important. Another good example is the renewable in integration into a grid. You have to have a standard. Otherwise, if you connect them together, you may disable a otherwise stable or grid system. So you can see these standards are crucially important. And of course, I will be the biggest uh, uh, events is, is the uh, uh, Bluetooth. Uh, <laughs> that's the, uh, it's actually, uh, that actually with standards is actually worldwide standards for Bluetooth. So that's the impact to society. So this is impact to size. So, so uh, if you, um, for instance, the products are, are, are algorithms and, you know, uh, processes, some people have a different opinion. Say the fight over three or uh, five nanometers is all processes. It tells you the importance, to not, not to mention algorithms. Algorithms, you know, created Google. Algorithm, you know, created uh, uh, Qualcomm, right? We all know that. So yes, all these things in the past has not recognized by it to be explicitly. So which means we are missing a big deal. So recent uh, the, the, uh, enhancement uh, so just you know, lets you to recognize that uh, um, in, uh, the important contributions by various different people at the different uh, levels of technology. Uh, they are all uh, equally important. So uh, as far as come to the ultimate goal for the impact of society at large, that's what's written in the bylaws. <clears throat> Okay, now let, then once you, see, you have done this, you think you are uh, one of the categories or two, two ca contribution categories, then you can start writing. Uh, you need to help your nominate and write your nomination package because you know yourself uh, all the best. Uh, so the nomination package is essentially important. Uh, you, it can have, you, you can have up to four groups of people to, to read your uh, your package. So first thing you do, you pick a two out of the five contribution categories. So now we told you to remember the four categories in the in the previously is called the nomination pack, uh, category. For each package, you can only pick one. So it's, it's the relationship uh, for your nomination is all. You pick a uh, scientist or educator or industry or technical leader. But now you pick a two. Uh, is and you can pick say a scientist researcher and a standards contribution that can happen easily right so that's the significant that uh, so each package now can have up, up to two contributions and then the relationship is and not all so that of course they can be the same you can use both of them uh, to be um, to be the same uh, for instance, you're academia, and then you think it's most likely uh, your contribution is in, and then you can use the two categories, use the same. <clears throat> so this is basically another way to recognize the reality uh, in the trenches, uh, so to speak, because now that all the new technology or products developments are increasingly cross-cutting the traditional boundaries, and all our society and councils, uh, societies are typically uh, uh, organically grow. Uh, they are, uh, in a sense, is you know a traditional uh, boundaries, especially old, uh, long-standing society. So I mentioned that, that your each you know package is reviewed by three or four separate processes. Uh, so let me this first one you know is your your reference writer or endorsement writers. They read your form, your package carefully to understand you know, the qualification. 
And then once you submit your uh, nomination package, the Society of Technical Council Fellow Evaluation Committee, known as FECs, uh, sometimes you, you hear the term FAC, uh, they evaluate them. And then uh, uh, the, for the small societies where you have a, a small uh, nomination, uh, then you have one more step. They, 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 we ask the small society to come together to put the nominees together to, uh, to, to in a CFAC cohort of EC. And then be, after that, it goes to the HB fellow committee for final uh, review and uh, quality control. And then uh, all this, uh, and so you can see up to four people. Then and the, the one during the judging process, all they have uh, is your package. Unless this a particular judge somehow knows you. But uh, that's uh, unlikely because one during our fellow <coughs> committee evaluation, we deliberately, you know, assign people uh, to avoid conflict. For instance, I'm from Power Electronics, and then uh, when I was served as a member, the nominees from Power Electronics are not assigned to me. So I'm a, I've been assigned as you know computer science and analysis science. So this is done uh, deliberately to avoid potential conflict of interest. So you can see. Uh, so most of the cases, all the judges have is your nomination package. It's crucially important for you to write an excellent uh, package so people can understand. So you have to write your uh, uh, package uh, for two impossible or uh, conflicting requirements. One is uh, you have to write it for a for experts to understand, which basically is your society, your 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 nominators, your society uh, FEC, because these are the society uh, experts. They know exactly what's happening in your particular technical field. So you have to uh, write such a way they understand your contribution, or, or they know you already. Or you have to also write uh, in such a way that a, a general list uh, they will easily understand. Um, so you can see they're similarly conflicting, uh, but it's uh, 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 incumbent for you to be able to write such a way, uh, so the people at the different levels. Because once you elevate, uh, you know, above your society at the cohorts and the uh, fellow committee level, people may not necessarily in your particular technical field. So you have to write such a way uh, they can understand. Mm -hmm. So that's the balance. So let me uh, mention a little bit about CFAC, uh, we call the Cohort Fellow Evaluation Committee. Uh, there are some controversy uh, last couple of uh, years before when I presented the, the, the but I'm, I'm, I'm uh, glad to share my most recent the feed, uh, the feedback for this year's conference, uh, the uh, uh, process uh, for class of 2025. I got, uh, I solicited, uh, you know, good feedback from multiple society and councils. They say that cohorts is a good thing, uh, as we thought it would be. Uh, it's simply uh, uh, invented um, uh, to solve one problem, uh, which is the statistical uh, disparity, uh, which is the sample size. Uh, and then you can see the uh, for large societies like computer, you know, Comsoc, uh, PS, they typically nominate close to 100 or 150 nominees uh, for each year because the size of society for IES and PALS, typically we have, let's say 15, 20 of them, or even more, a little bit more. But for small societies and the councils, they nominate one, two, three, or sometimes even zero. Uh, and then let's say we all know how to do the, the uh, federal committee level, how do we combine them together to form a consolidated overall ranking uh, before we finalize the, uh, uh, the, the, the top, you know, 300 plus people, right? So you cannot simply just put the, uh, the number one from a small uh, small pool together with the number one from large pool because that's significant. Statistically, they're quite different. So what we do, we you know, in the, then we in the past, what it happened is we actually ask the uh, 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 HB federal committee judges to reevaluate uh, those from small societies, and then. Um, that's actually a disadvantage to societies and councils uh, uh, because they actually just like as a generally speaking, they are non-specialists. Uh, and then and also when they made the decision because the, uh, uh, for the integrity of the process, they are confidential. You don't know what happened there. 
But uh, here we then we started to address that, and, you know, concern. Then we actually we asked the society council of small societies to come together. You rank them, you combine them, you rank them amongst yourselves, and then submit to us. So we are, want them to be a twenty or thirty nominees, uh, the size. So then it's a lot easier for us to combine them. So that's what is all, all about. So in other words, it's just one more step. Uh, it's not a uh, uh, it's not a step for additional elevation. Uh, evaluation is just one more step for you combine them. Uh, so, okay, so um, so that's the uh, the nomination package. So the I, like I mentioned before, you have to nomination includes the three fundamental aspects: individual contributions to the field made by the nominee, the impact from the, these contributions, and then verifiable evidence. So basically, that's the three things when the nomination is all about. Uh, so you need to focus on that and you do a good job about it. Uh, con use a concise narrative, uh, narratives that explicitly address these three aspects are more effective. You know, ex excessive superlatives, sometimes does not help you. Uh, so, you know, we, as we all know, some people, sometimes people use you know, adjectives on top of adjectives and on top of adjectives. It just does not make any much sense. So, so it needs to be concise and to the point. So now let's talk about the roles each reference and endorsements uh, uh, play. Then let's talk about the reference first, uh, because the issue, um, as I mentioned a little while ago, each one of them actually play uh, different roles. Let me check my, my time. Uh, okay, I need to speed up my speed. Um, uh, then uh, you can have uh, three up to five you know, uh, references, uh, but then all the references and writers has to be a, actually a fellow. Uh, the reason is very simple. The job for reference writers is simply to judge a, a, a nominee if a nominee is qualified or not. And then if it is qualified, and then rank the nominee uh, based on the four categories. Uh, one is that uh, not qualified, uh, qualified, and, you know, um, well qualified, uh, extremely qualified, uh, four categories, well qualified, extremely qualified. So then you have four categories. <clears throat> So here, the reference, we, in order for you to get the, the strongest benefits, uh, we actually encourage you to go outside your institution uh, or your or company uh, to get people to write. Uh, uh, because I'll just give you an example. Uh, we actually had uh, a nomination package that they have three references written by the same department uh, professors. Uh, they're all in the same department. As you would imagine, that will cut into your uh, credibility. Um, so if you can go outside your uh, institution, find the independent uh, uh, writers. Another uh, uh, question frequently asked is, uh, you know, do I, have, uh, do I have to have five references? And then technically you don't. If you read the forms, the minimum is three. Uh, that's your good. But uh, overwhelming majority actually submit five. So if you want to be competitive, so my recommendation, recommendation for you is go do five. So it's just reality, right? Uh, everybody else does five, you do three, uh, you do yourself a disadvantage. Hmm. So that's uh, for references. So again, it's a focus on whether you are qualified and to what degree you are qualified. And then uh, we encourage you to go outside uh, your institution to get the references to be more credible. And then uh, the next thing is the uh, the endorsement writer. Endorsement writers uh, so serves a totally different purpose and it's uh, written by different people. For endorsement writers, you can have you can have zero or up to three. Uh, the same reason I just mentioned, overwhelming majority of people actually have three ref endorsement letters. And then my personal you know recommendation for you is also do three. More importantly, the uh, uh, the endorse endorsement writer serves, you know, very important yet quite different than a reference. Uh, endorsement writers basically can be written, can be written, uh, can be anybody which actually uh, doesn't have to even to be actually member, not to mention that, that to be uh, actually a fellow. So the purpose for that is for uh, this particular reason is, is this: is basically provide, you know, verifiable provide evidence for your contributions. So for that purpose, uh, then you can say typically people know you well. Uh, so, so, 
So this this is particularly uh, useful for three categories, for specific categories. Um, one is that I, let me, one if you say if you work for a company, and then uh, when your technology is being invented and the company want to use them in a particular products, they probably do not want you to publish at all. And then uh, of course that then you just can't do anything at that time. Uh, then uh, after that, then you um, you know the product, the pro your technology made into the products. The product you know made a big sales, uh, hit you know, help the company bottom line, and then uh, the product you know occupy the market. Then the company may be more you know open for you to write something. All right. And then for yeah that's that's your contribution. The second class is that if you work for your government, you have a, usually you have a classified information. Uh, you cannot uh, write them too much about it, but then you usually you ask a non-classified version of it, and then you the best people to write that is your customer, and then they can uh, write that for you. So that's the second category of people. The third category of people is the, for educated nomination. It's typically, you write a textbook or a lab menu or lab course. Um, so here, then the best people who knows that is your Colleagues, particularly uh, your department chairs or uh, your uh, your you know dean your deans, so then you can see that the uh, contrary to reference writers, that the, for endorsement writers, and these are the people who knows you well. Uh, so you can see that's this. Uh, so the difference here again, it's actually it doesn't have to be an HB fellow, it doesn't even have to be a a HB member. So and uh, then. Can be written by the people who knows you well, have a first-hand knowledge uh, of your particular contribution, uh, particularly for the three categories I just mentioned. So that can be a very useful tool. Some people don't even bother to do any endorsement. I right? and I would encourage you to actually use endorsement as a tool to provide more information, first-hand information to support your case. And then uh, I'm showing some, uh, as you can see, I mentioned that. Um, you can see in the past year, past year, the total nomination in the middle where my arrow the cursor is, it's 949 last year for class 2024. We elevated 323. You can see uh, it's about typically uh, roughly one third. So that number is it's really typical. Uh, uh, so like 20, for class of 2022, it's 1029. We elevated 311. You can see, uh, uh, so this happened here. Another aspect I would mention to you is that uh, you know the educator nomination in 1999 was 303, but in 2024 it's 699. It's more than doubled. Yet for industry people, 207 stayed 187. You can see it's roughly not that's not changed much. It stayed about the 200, just roughly at the 200. You can see that's why you can see that the ratio to here is a three to one. You can see, no wonder in recent years that the more the fellow has been increasingly perceived as a academic pursuit. As we know, that's not true. That's not the intention of the, uh, the board of directors. Okay, so that's why another reason we start to take in the steps uh, to correct this uh, disparity. Um, and as you know, if, in order for us to actually to make impact, uh, more impact to the society at large. We need leadership people. Otherwise, we cannot say we are the home of your profession. Remember, it used to be the punchline is advancing technology for humanity. <clears throat> Recently, the board actually added, say, hey, um, uh, the professional home of uh, a worldwide professional home for technologies and uh, uh, industry people. So we have the stats uh, for all of them. I'm, uh, I don't uh, want to go through them. Then uh, you can see for women in engineer in electronics, uh, and then, uh, you know, they increased a little bit, and then uh, 2023 was 100, but 2024 dropped down to 85. So that's why I started giving this talk. Uh, then I'm glad to report to you uh, for class of 2025, we're back in the, uh, I think it's 111, so we are back. So that's what we want to see, more, uh, more women uh, nomina nom uh, nom uh, nominees. So that's, so we actually um, have this, um, Done for for various different uh, 
Well, I, I, IES, you can see IES are doing not bad, so 36% last year. And uh, as a PALS, IES, or PS, uh, PS is slightly low, but uh, so the so called typical four power societies is doing uh, relatively well. Relatively well. So here's a PS and a PE. Last year, PALS did extremely well, 47. Uh, uh, PS is 31%. Um, so you can see that the. <clears throat> Okay, let me, let's quickly um, um, go through the portal. If you, I would, if you also, uh, if you um, uh, start serious considering to be nominated, you can go down the portal. There's a lot of information. I would actually encourage you to go read this, spend some time there. There's a lot of information <laughs> for you to uh, to anchor yourself before you write the the, uh, the nomination package. Uh, Okay, uh, technically speaking, you don't write, your nominator writes, but uh, you need to work with the nominator, get uh, his or her permission, uh, but usually you have to work with the nominator uh, to provide the raw material. And then the, the finalization is done by your nominator, not you. <clears throat> so there's a lot of documents in here. And then uh, I just want to mention that uh, the uh, HB Standards Association have actually particular guides uh, for fellow, uh, uh, evaluation, elevation, uh, based on standards contributors, contributions. So they said also you can go down this link, then you can get uh, to the standard association. So with that, uh, I thank you for your attention. I'll be glad to get any uh, questions, uh, Miloš. Thank you very much, Don. This is uh, such a such a hot topic, and as as any other, um, changes over time. So it's very important to stay in touch with with the, the latest expectations when it comes to uh, preparing a successful application. Um, uh, for the audience, please do feel free to post your questions uh, or comments in the chat Q and A window, and I'm sure Don will be very happy to address those. And Don, while we are waiting for questions, um, yeah. I was wondering if you could. Yeah. Uh, uh, a little bit shed more light on on something that I have uh, noticed that there's a little bit of confusion with, and that is the impact of contributions. When we say impact, what does impact really mean? Is it really a, a cumulative a list of of achievements, or is it more about several strong, impactful inventions contributions uh, can you yeah. can you tell us more about what yeah. what impact really entails and then the second question would be uh, can you give us examples of verifiable evidence what does it mean uh, do these uh, evaluators really have a depth of knowledge in everything or do they really try to find verifiable evidence any any human would right so please yeah. please tell us more Okay, uh, I think the, the the best idea, you know, for you, uh, you go back to what I mentioned. Is so, so impact to society. Okay, so what are we able to say if you work for companies, if you say if you say, I had the developed the technology A and B, they you know they made into the you know product you know F and Z whatever you call it, and then this you know made the you know it's the sales in hundreds of million dollars. I mean, whatever number that's good for your particular products. And then I think that's the uh, impact to society, okay, right? Oh, you say I actually uh, deploy this uh, renewable energy system. They've been used for uh, this capital uh, hospital and then survive a particular abnormal weather condition and works perfectly supposed to, uh, et cetera. These are all direct uh, you know, impact to society. And then also you say, and let me give you say the Apple design. There's, you know, it's a design concept. And, you know, it's a it's a collection collection of uh, uh, technologies. But uh, the way we actually introduce technology to the society is a product. So you can see this is the impact. You change the way we live. That's you know, in my personal opinion, I mentioned I started talking at board level. We don't celebrate the uh, success like this. That's why I say, hey, how come people didn't know, didn't know what HOB does? Because we don't celebrate them. We should have celebrated them, HOB, you know, by design. Okay, now, so this one thing, uh, uh, one ex example, uh, I, 
then if you look at talking about the uh, processes, if you say, hey, my um I improved these processes within T and you know TSMC, for instance, uh, this is just a purely example. Uh, then this and see, I actually then based on this uh, uh, process improvement, I actually increase my yields by this much. That's impact to society because these these days the competition are at yields. You know, we all know the three nanometer, five nanometers that uh, fighting actually all the you know the processes how do you get yields. <clears throat> these are the impact to society. Uh, but uh, realistically, I, I know uh, then. Um, uh, people people automatically at the particular from industry they look at the your impact factors look at your paper your number of papers you publish uh, the index and all the stuff uh, for many of them they can be uh, I would say this are the direct impact to research to so to you know research to uh, a large extent impact to society but yet to a lot of extent they are not a direct impact society as far as you know for you know ordinary day life. Um, particularly, if you cannot make to the uh, uh, to the products go through the cross the death valley, so to speak, to become something really useful, then you become a purely in the lab. So that's and then you have much less impact, right? Even though it's really uh, ingenious invention, oh, oh, that's a great idea. But however, so for whatever reason, you cannot make to a, a scale, cannot be scaled, cannot make it into a mass products. That would be that. Um, uh, less impactful, so stuff like that. You know, standards like you know, if you do a standards, you know, it's like widely adopt, so like the uh, uh, Bluetooth one. Hey, that's impact. And you will see, oh, right, you know, it's not too hard to write a. You you hear many people say it's not too hard to write a standards, which is true. But uh, I tell people it's extremely hard for you to write a standards. People, all the people will use. That's the that's the difference. If you use a standard that actually everybody else uses, that's impact. The, t the same is true for textbooks. You know, you and I, everybody can write a textbook, right? You know, as long as you teach, you have a textbook. You just have to put them in a formal form. But it's good. It's, it's not. It's they're not different. For a textbook, everybody, everybody else uses. That's a big difference. If you have a textbook, say, hey, it's used by ten departments, uh, or even thirty, or even hundred schools. That's impact to society. It's not too easy to write such a good you know, textbook for people to use, even though we teach, everybody teaches every day. <laughs> it's, it's a big, big difference, stuff like that. Yeah. Thank you very much, Don. I think you're making some very valuable points for both future candidates and those that are involved in the process as referees or, or, or those that write endorsements and, and others. Um, we are coming to an end of the hour. Uh, Don, I would ask you to maybe display your first opening slide with your name oh, and background, okay. and perhaps we can uh, close this this great session with, with that slide. And uh, I'd like to thank you on behalf of everybody involved and on behalf of IES for presenting this talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, uh, everybody. Um, for attending. So hopefully we share some knowledge that can be helpful for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Have a okay. wonderful rest of the day. Yeah, you too. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.